Before we get into this episode, we'd like to thank our partners, SofaWorks. SofaWorks are a family-owned, proudly South African quality furniture manufacturing company. Yeah, we'll yeah. get all the burping so, out of the way. We should have hash browns as well. Mm. Right? <laughs> There's a hash brown in there if no, you want good. Good. Have, you, have you tried already? Yeah, it's a croissant. Thing. There's actually an entire Egg McMuffin meal in there it's if you want. It's too late now, bro. We could have had this thing longer. <laughs> <laughs> we could have counted really? it like nine months. Yeah, more. we actually, this is actually about like eating noises and ASMR and oh, we just yes. want people to listen yeah, to you the, eat what's things. The, what's that um, where they eat loud on purpose and it makes all the noises? Is yes. it a, a, no, is it not ASMR? No, I was going to say Bukhan, but it's definitely no, not that. No, it's not that, bro. <laughs> it's definitely not that. It's um, so when they eat loud. I don't... Um, buck, 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 buck. I'm going to Google it. That's buck, buck run. Uh, eat loud videos. <laughs> this, this could get sketchy. Uh, like online so they really do or like personas do a jar they eat like an octopus very loudly with like they'll have a mic here and then eat legit it. it's effective who's watching this man like the person that's doing it obviously has a crowd of audience you the name? <laughs> watching this mukbang thing. mukbang i mean it's called a mukbang <laughs> that means there's people on their laptops or their iPads. we just yeah, here yeah, to mukbang mukbang yeah we're here to See. educate the people that's why yeah. we're here <laughs> See, yeah, legit. <laughs> but like, I'm so fine, thank you. Yeah, yeah, they try these crazy things. Anyways, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Story Time. We are here today with Tony DeZorzi. So glad to have you in. I did say that, I, I said pronounced right, eh? Yes, I had to double check. Cricket legend, cricket star, say whatever you want. This is officially now our first cricket player ever being in studio. So, Tony, thank you for being the first. Man. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is tough. There we go. It's tough to have you in, man. How's things going? How's things been being in Cape Town in South Africa? Are you happy at the moment? Yeah, I'm very happy. I feel like uh, whenever I'm coming back to Cape Town, I'm coming home. So, that's yes. always a cool feeling. Um, okay. I've only been here for like three years, but it feels like home. Yeah. Um, then I was in Joburg recently for our uh, test team camp um, and like fast bowlers camp. So, Moving around and then go back to Joby on Tuesday, so moving around a lot, but chill, yeah. all good. But moving around a lot within cricket, within your profession in the industry, something that you're dealing with a lot, right? Yeah, it's something that's just part of the part of the job. If you don't like traveling, then it makes it, I think it makes it worse. Yeah. It makes it tougher. So I, I enjoy traveling, not necessarily like airports, like South Africans in my opinion are the stupidest travelers. They stand on the... Really? The trolleys, the trolley let's, thing. Let's talk about this. Uh, it irks me. <laughs> South Africans <laughs> travel like they drive. Yes, yes. They, they don't care. Like, uh -huh. if you stand on the trolley, then your bag won't come quicker, and now we have to move around. Like, just stand at a distance so that we can all just get yep. the bag. Yeah. People think the closer I am to the to the roundabout thingy, I'll be the first to yes. get my bag, and the guys at the back are just throwing bag for bag, not knowing who you are. Yesterday I was I was lost. And I was just like, guys, what are we doing? <laughs> but, really? But other you than stand that, up and go like, hey, let's get some order here. Come on, man! Like, we'll yeah, all get yeah. our bags. There yeah. we go. But other than that, I, I enjoy the traveling. Yes. We were we were literally watching a video this morning. Some guy, sorry that I don't remember what your name is, but he put out a reel um, talking about someone from Cape Town going to Joburg. It's brilliant. We'll try to link it so people can see. And he brings up certain topics about Cape Town that you being from Joburg, how true do you think these are? Okay. One, Cape Townians have a horrible habit of never saying hi to each other out in public. We pretend like we don't know each other. But like if you went to school no, with that's someone. Thing. That is a thing in Cape Town. You like that, like you bad. ignore each other in the, in the supermarket. Like yes, you'll no, see that's each a thing other. in Cape Town. No, yeah. that is a thing. Yes. I agree with that. That's a thing. Yeah. Why? So like you and I now from recording whatever, then if I see you in like two weeks time, I'd see you walking that side of the street and I'd go, oh my God, there's Tony. And then and you, you kind of just keep going. It's that weird is. that we do that. I did it yesterday. You mutually agree That's silently important. that you're going to ignore each other. Exactly. You mutually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we see each other. There's yeah. this like air of like, uh, how's it? but you don't actually say it. Yes. <laughs> there, I did it to there someone. There isn't even the air of sorry. Thing. <laughs> huh? You're just like, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to pretend like I didn't go to school with this person for yes. 10 years. Yeah, yeah, like I haven't <laughs> known him for seven years. That's a horrible thing. Another thing Cape Townians do is we say we are going to make plans. Mm. We never do. Yeah, but that's it. Never make plans. I didn't experience that in Joburg. So we go for the past two, three years. We've been going to Joburg every year to go film for like three, four months. Yeah. 
two things I love about Jovo. One is the people. Jovo people are incredible. And I think it's because you have to be, because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah, so the only thing I never thought about it. Like, yeah, I never thought about it. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the only thing there is to do is to socialize and get along with each other. Yes. Here in Cape Town, we're so spoiled yes. for like activities and the mountains and the vineyards yes. and the ocean and like you can keep yourself entertained all yes. weekend, you know? Yes. Um, people being number one and two being I love the food and the restaurant vibe of Jobo. There's so many, not that there aren't any here, there's great food in Cape Town, but I like that people are often eating out. Mm. That's like the thing to do in Jobo. Yes. You socialize over food. Yes. And I've grown up in a family that's all about food. So that for me hits home really well. Okay. You know, that like, it won't be, hey, we're all going to go to the beach on Saturday, which I also love. But it'll be like, hey, we're all going to go for lunch. Or yes. hey, we're all going to go for dinner. Yes. Um, and the purpose is to get there and eat. Which I don't know if you've seen the same dynamics. Yeah, between. but I think like, I, what I prefer about Cape Town is it's less franchises. So like True. in Joburg, everything is, there's like the, those nucleus little cities like Parkers, whatever. And they all just have the same, like Salsa, Tiger's Milk, blah, 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 like all cool places. But uh -huh. they're all franchises. Whereas I like, in Cape Town, I like that there's one-off spots. Like you can find a... Or like I, there's a spot near me, banana jam, and there's like a, banana like, jam. That rings a bell. Yeah, it's like a Caribbean place or whatever. It's like a one-off yes. spot in the corner. And That's like, cool. I like that about Cape Town. That yes, there's little different family-owned restaurants that you okay. can support or whatever. I, I prefer that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, have you gone to Saigon Susie? Yes. No, no, I haven't. I like that. Incredible. Is it? Where is that in town? There's there's one in. Where do we stay every time we go? There's one uh, in Rose, as well. In Rosebank. No, no, no. It is, he's talking about Joe. Yeah, yeah, Rosebank. Rosebank. Yeah, yes. yeah, there's one Rosebank. Next to a street time. bar named Desire, which I think is a fantastic name for a bar. Yeah, it is. That's also great. Yeah, yeah. we had Brecky. Because I remember it every time, so it's great. No, I haven't been. It's so good. Okay. They've got like karaoke rooms and like. There's one in Cedar, man, isn't it? Yeah, some I think there's, 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 there's two. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. one in Cedar. That's closer to me, yeah. Go there. Yeah. It's a karaoke so bar, you can rent out the yes. room. Yes, yes, and yes. it's got all the down lights and the yes. shiny colors so, and shit. Yeah. Very, very cool place. Yeah, yeah. Um, every time we go, I'm like, that's where we're going. Um, we'll be in Joburg now, the beginning of September. Okay. I don't know if you're there. No, we only, I'm only there now for like the next week and then I'll come back again. And then you come back again. Yeah. Shit, we're going to just miss you. Yeah. What do you come back for? Still cricket related? Still coming cricket. back to work? Oh, my like normal team is obviously province. So yeah, it's yeah. different. It's similar to like the rugby guys. You obviously can be like with your, your province, so Stormers or yes. like, Houses Western Province. And then you might have like training camps or something with Proteas guys. So that's what I'm going for. Okay. Training with Proteas. So you've got up for Proteas training and then back, back for, for Western Province training. Okay. And is it is it such a thing? This is the part of cricket that I actually find quite fascinating. So Cricket throughout India and surrounding countries and areas is a huge deal. Yeah. Whereas, let's take rugby as an example, European rugby is like a huge deal. I'm talking like in terms of a place to go when you leave the country and you're going to go expand your career, mm. earn lots of money. Yes. You know, that, those elements That's that kind of come into play. Yeah, yeah. Is that the same thing in cricket? Uh, not really. I think... The, it used to be maybe like five, ten years ago. It oh. used to be in that way where you'd go to the UK yeah. to like expand your career, earn more money, kind of thing. So okay. the same way like the rugby guys would go over, but that's kind of changed now with all the twenty twenty leagues. Um, guys don't necessarily have to be centrally contracted to a club in the, the UK or a club in South Africa. Um, they might decide like for someone like Faf isn't contracted anywhere but plays all the leagues all the year round. See. Um, okay. So that's that's kind of changed. It used to be like that, and right. then obviously the the pinnacle would be India, the IPL. That's the yeah. most money, the best players. So that's okay. Because yeah. I saw one of our one of our South African players. He was, I think it was Boucher. I think it was Mark Boucher on Instagram had like a stupid amount of followers. Yeah, like 50, 60 million followers. That no, can't be Boucher. Yeah, not no someone. South African guy. Yeah, but it's literally the whole of India following. No, then there must be AB. Maybe it's, it's AB. AB. It has to be AB because he's like the, fine the closest thing to Vera. It's just <laughs> he's like, like he's like a demigod. Then. Really? Yeah, AB and like Vera and Bernie, those guys are like literally like demigods. Then, because I, I, 
I think it is. Let's see what the number is. Imagine I over-exaggerated and it's like 4 million. Okay, it's like 30 million. Yeah, what did I say 30? Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So do you think that as looking at numbers like that, right? This is also what, what, what blows my mind about the sport. One, South Africa is incredibly good at cricket. Like we've always had really good teams. Yes. Why do you think cricket isn't as big of a deal here as it is in India? Well, like, okay, I'll give you, like you said, AB's on 30. Mm. Who do you think has more followers? Virat Kohli. I saw, I saw the video the other day. Virat Kohli and LeBron James. Virat well, Kohli see, has more. See, immediately I'd go LeBron, LeBron James. James. Yeah, exactly. But, but why, why, it, why is that Because that's their main sport and there's a billion people. So, Jeez, like, the more, can you say, like, the, the sport's, like, monopolized. That's the, yeah. the, that's the only, I mean, they play hockey. I think they're quite, India's quite good at Thank hockey. You. And, yeah. I know they have a football league that's sometimes there for bands like soccer. Um, but yeah, but that's probably just for fun. Yeah, but yeah. cricket is like if you when you go there, you see it as on another level. Even like when I went, I wasn't. I was still. I think it was my second year as a professional cricketer, uh -huh. and we were just there for a training camp, spin camp, and people would come to the ground to watch oh, us train nice. and like ask for photos and stuff. And we weren't anybody. Like I mean, we played a couple of professional games, but we literally weren't anybody. People asking for photos. For, like for them, cricket is like a religion, bro. Like people pray for their teams. Like they'll have shrines. It's it's really? almost a different. Like you can't compete. Like as much as you say South Africa is uh, has a it's a big sport or whatever. Like India, that's it's like religion, bro. It's wow. special. When you go there and you play, you can see the energy is completely different. That must be quite a special like experience to be in a country that like idolizes your profession. Yeah, I, I haven't, unfortunately, I haven't experienced it yet, but I've just, okay. like I said, a bunch of training and stuff, and you speak to the guys that come back from India, and it, I know it can be a lot, like, all the time, people on you, uh, but I mean, uh, it's also, I suppose, a privilege in a sense, like you say, people are the yeah. We interrupt this episode to thank our sponsor, Frankly's. Like all good stories, Frankly started with two best mates who saw the need for something more fun within underwear. With iconic prints and designs, you too can color your day with bright, funky, patterned underwear use code frankly's matching to get 20 percent off all underwear we interrupt this episode to thank our sponsor truth coffee roasting truth coffee roasting have put the effort in to source beans from around the world to bring you exclusive high premium coffee flavors that are not just a caffeine fix they keep me going they keep the team at story time going and now they can keep you going too use your exclusive story time code and get 10 percent off all premium coffees Thank you, Truth. Uh, so getting to this point now, like you're saying that you haven't yet, do we call it toured in yeah, India yeah, and kind of, kind, of, kind of done the rounds? But you have in many, many, many other places. I mean, recently yeah. you were somewhere in Europe, weren't you? I was on holiday in Europe, yeah. Oh, you were on holiday in Europe? Yeah, okay, so you actually get time on holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I like to travel. I don't like to, if I have time off, then I'll try flying. That's good. Okay, sick. Yeah. Where, was, where was this time you went? I was in Istanbul and then recently we were in Sri Lanka, we were playing in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Yes. Istanbul is incredible. Yeah, I enjoyed it. That's so, Sri Lanka. Very good. We spent like two, three nights there and then we're supposed to spend another week and a half on the way back. Okay. But COVID hit while we were in Canada and so uh, there was no time to stop and see. Well, we the nearly city. got stuck there for in, a in long Canada. time. No, in Turkey. In Turkey, yeah. Because we had like an 11 hour layover. We, yeah, we, we arrived there and we were looking at the, the flight. Screen yes. and it just went cancel, 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 cancel. Except for Joburg and Cape Town, we're still green. Yeah. <laughs> so we're sitting there watching, like, we oh no. <laughs> nah, so that was cool. It's like, what flu? It's done. No, it's good. We've got malaria, <laughs> yeah, we've got, got all these other stuff. things who come with COVID. Um, John, Istanbul's incredible. So, so how awesome that you ended up in a profession that one you love, but two also gets to give you the secondary enjoyment of yeah. getting to travel, right? 100%. So, Tony as a kid, why cricket? Uh, I was good at other sports actually, I was good at football and rugby, but um, I'd always obviously played cricket and then, uh, like it happens to most of the guys, you get to an age where you can get, you get bursary offers and, and okay. stuff like that, so I got in like a sports one to a few schools um, and then I just felt like Cares was the one place I wanted to go, mm -hmm. which is pretty much a cricket academy, like there's a lot of national players and franchise players that come out of care. So I think that kind of was just the, the stepping stone. Um, like I said, then I played rugby, but you kind of have to make a decision. Um, it's just my, myself and my mom and I had a bursary offer for, for cricket studies, all this kind of thing. And I just felt like the path was going to be a little bit 
clearer and mm. maybe easier or whatever in cricket. Mm. Um, and I also just felt like there'd be a bit more longevity. Yeah. Um, obviously with rugby, I respect those guys, but I mean, if you get one injury or something, I, was, I always had to think about those things. So, um, so for me, that's I kind of that's why I was pushed or went into the way of yeah. cricket. And then I think I've been quite lucky how it's gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, see, and if you say lucky, I'm like, no, dude, you worked hard, and like, I, yeah, maybe there's an element of luck, whatever. But it looks like you were thinking things through, yeah, a lot, yeah. right, from 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 a young age. Yeah, definitely. And what was your mom's take on on cricket? Was she going go hammer it, or was there the kind of like double layer of like all professional sportsmen? You should also, which you did, went and studied. Yeah. You should study and like have a backup. Was that the kind of? Nah, my mom's quite chilled. Like I suppose I was lucky. She never, she wasn't too um, uh, like heavy on me and like, you know, you have to do this, do this. But also, all the motivation came from myself, and every decision okay. I made was from myself. And she okay. would just, her only question would always be like, "Are you happy? Is it still enjoy? Are you still enjoyment? Is it still like bring enjoyment into your life? If not, then no." But never really like. I think she kind of knew I would make the right decisions, so, but I also knew I had to think about these things. I couldn't just go with the wind. You couldn't just free for all and no. hope. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's such a good way of thinking about it. It just like, makes such a difference. It's 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 questions that I like to ask a lot of our guests. Is like we had um, uh, Tabo Mudada on, and I asked him the same thing of like, how did your family take it, and when was the moment in his life when it kind of clicked, and you kind of go, oh, well, I actually think I'm pulling this off. Yeah. Of like, I actually think I'm going to be a professional cricket player. Yeah. When was that moment for you? Uh, <laughs> I thought it was when I was under 19 at the World Cup, yes. but then we got absolutely murdered. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's and brilliant. <laughs> yeah, no, we got murdered. Um, really? And I was captain, so like you were facing the brunt of like media yeah. attention and stuff. Yeah. So, so prior to that, I thought, geez, I'm, I'm going to be professional. I'm, I, because under 19 is like World Cup is the pinnacle and yeah. that's all you can really achieve at that age unless you like maybe Quinton and you really play South Africa um, so I was like you know you think you're a big dog and then yeah we got murdered I didn't do well on my own batting front as well so that brought me back down and then I think only after I got my first contract um, and I was able to like I got a gift like a nice gift for my mom that she's spoken about when we were very young awesome um, so awesome. I got it for her and then that was kind of where it was like Okay, okay, cool. Like, yeah. Because then from young she wouldn't have to, um, you know, like pay for food and stuff. Whatever I was doing my own thing already. So, so once I was okay. doing that, I could. Then I was like, okay, cool. You self sustain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom's okay. Like, right, you okay? Yeah. Then you can push on. Yeah. So family's always kind of been a bit of a driving, driving factor for you. I'd say so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say so. I think it's important to have like anchors yeah. or people that have your back. So yeah. That's what for myself as well. I mean for Jess as well. It's such an element of like my family's my family have a saying of without family a man has little. Um, and it doesn't have to be family by blood, it's just it's the family you choose. Yes. And it's the element of having family surrounding you that now I have a reason to fight. Because a lot of the time fighting for just myself runs out of steam yeah. a little bit. Definitely. Um, and it's it, it's very hard for external factors or for the world to beat me down. And I have to deal with it, but if I have family backing me, yeah. you know, they're not getting it face on, they're standing alongside me, ah, dude, don't worry about it, yes. I keep going. And it's difficult when you're in the moment yourself to be able to say that all the time, yes. like, ah, everything will be okay. Looking at your, your, your Instagram and stuff, I love your Instagram, <laughs> Thank it's you. so sick, because like, <laughs> such few people get that element right of being a professional sports player, but your profile is you you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. It, it's not the sport so looking at your profile you pick up one you understand fashion back to front like <laughs> not like achiever, dude, even, even 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 your kid today i was like this guy's looking fly when you came in but not achiever bro achiever's on he's got trip oh yes okay, i've seen I don't him as that well. much yeah, yeah i don't know no, that no, much you guys aren't point for that he's got trip um, him and david they got trip Oh yeah, I've seen some of the boys. But they're different tax brackets as well, so I'm doing the most as well. Yeah, exactly. So they're doing that. We're doing what we can with what we have. Exactly. You know what I mean? Killing it. Um, But it's that, and also picking up on your love for travel, and uh, you can see throughout your profile that you're interacting with people and eating different foods and seeing different places, and 
that's why I said to you when you sat down on the first thing, and I apologize if you've been told this so many times, yeah. but you do have J. Cole vibes. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> One hundred yeah, percent. I'll take it. I'll take it yeah. um, you just like have a calm about you. That's really nice to be around. Thank you. Um, and you can tell that you have internal joy, not external joy, which yeah. is which is you don't find that in many people. Um, how do you look at your life and the position you're in as a professional? How, how do you maintain that? Yeah, well, like I said, you have anchors. So you have your I call them anchors. You call them maybe like you have people that will keep you grounded or yeah. so like if I get as much as I have fashion or whatever like if I get ahead of myself I know the first person who's going to phone me and say hey hey what are yeah. you doing I'm seeing my mom yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> so you have people and you have friends that I mean guys are quite lucky I think in the sense that they have their close friends won't let them oh not you know what chance. I mean like as soon as oh, they yeah. can see you getting a bit ahead of yourself they'll yeah. wait hey, come back so yeah. it's important to have those people around I think that's mm. that's cool um, because you, I don't think you can only do it by yourself um, I like to pray um and yeah, for the rest of it, I just try my best to not take everything too personally because that's what I used to do when I was younger and it impacts you a lot. Yeah. Um, so I just try to not take everything too personally because I realize how small or insignificant we actually are. Like, yeah. I mean, you have a big following, I only have an island, I have even a thousand. So as much, like, as much as I might think I'm important, whatever, like, it's re I'm really not. Yeah. So. And like you're saying, at, at 19 to play the World Cup and have it go the way that it went, it's a lot of like one attention yes. and a lot of judgment on someone that's really young. Yeah, yeah. Dealing with that must have been quite a trippy experience as well. Yes. And coming home and it's like, okay, other people might not know how much I love this, but I love this just as much as the guy that won yes. that board cup. You know, yes, like, yeah, and, 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 and that's what's so difficult to understand to people. So how, how has fan base and the fans of cricket been throughout your life? I think cr cricket fans are quite, my son, they're quite flippant, I think. Like they, yeah. when you're doing well, because it's not like, I don't think it's like rugby and cricket where, you know, you can, if you're in a good team and you had an average game, you're not mm. going to stand out as much. Whereas like cricket, then the numbers are there after every game, every innings. So even if your team has done well, but you didn't, it's there. Like, Ooh, you understand what I mean? I so see. I feel like, uh, obviously it's easier to be scrutinized or looked at. Mm -hmm. or judge um, but it's on the same thing is like those same people that when you then score a double hundred or whatever they will be the ones that oh well done you know we, we always knew we it you yeah. and we knew it those will be the same ones that I think that's probably across all uh, I don't know fan bases they, yeah. the, the people that love you will be the first ones to to mess you so like I said that's something I don't take personally as well because okay. if you take the good stuff from random people then it's, yeah. it's I don't know I don't, I don't think it does anything good for you well there's there's, there's a quote I don't know who it was that said it now I don't want to be wrong I'm going to say Jamie Foxx and I hope I'm right I think you're right because I know the quote you're talking about the clap and the booze no, or was it Dave right. Chappelle no, 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 I don't know the quote sorry oh, damn you probably have a fire one though okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, it, if it's legit from Jamie Foxx probably a fire quote but the quote was don't uh, don't learn to take in appreciate and take to heart the claps because when the booze come you'll do the same thing Yeah. Now, what was your Jamie Foxx quote no, no, I think it, maybe it wasn't Jamie Foxx then. Maybe it was another famous black guy. Um, it was, they got really good quotes. Dave yeah, Washington. Dave Chappelle. <laughs> no, Dave Chappelle. Oh, there's a Dave lot. Dave Washington. Dude, they just come. But it was something of like, if you, no, actually I lied. It was, I think it was Tendorka. And he says, mm. Tendorka or St. Croix or whatever. He didn't read the newspaper when he got runs or when he did, because he didn't need random people or yes. people he didn't know to tell him how good he was. Yeah. And because yeah. he knew how good he was or whatever, but no, it's not, it was a different quote. It was Jamie Foxx. It was. <laughs> it was a quote that Jamie Foxx made about cricket. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it is what it is. So, so I wanted to get your, your uh, opinion on this, right? So becoming a cricket player, because I said to you I played cricket in school, yeah. which 90% of people in this country can say, yes. right? I didn't enjoy cricket. Fair enough. At a stage I hated cricket, right? It was the thing of you had to play this many sports, you had to play these like sports in the sport winter, summer, these yeah. sports in the summer, exactly. Yeah. And cricket happened to be one of them. Reason I hate cricket is it doesn't make sense to me why I would choose to stand there while someone throws an object at me. It, it freaks me out, right? <laughs> it's like the only sport I can think of where I'm like, you just stay there, 
I'm gonna wallop oh. this like rock hard ball as hard as I can towards you. Yeah. And so I had this fear of batting, which yes. freaked me out. Yeah. But I really like bowling. Okay. So I used to be like one of the top three, four choices of bowling, bowling of, yes. of, of being a fast bowler. I didn't know how to spin. Yeah. Didn't know how to do all the funky stuff. I, I had nothing. Basically, all I had was throw it as fast as I could. Yeah. Right? When it came to batting, I was like, it's fine. Just put me right at the bottom of the list. Yeah. And then I used to go out for, do they call it a golden duck? Yeah, ducks, yeah. All the time. <laughs> Literally, yeah. all the time. I'd stand. I thought it was called a crying duck. No, no, no. no I crying was the crying duck. duck. Yeah, he was the crying duck. I was the crying thing duck. As a crying duck. A crying duck? Isn't that when you, like, you get bowled out the first You know why you say crying three? duck? Because in the old days or whatever, maybe when you were watching cricket with your dad or something, they used to put that crying duck yes. across the screen. That's like walking. That's probably why you're saying crying duck. That's like, no. so cute. No, it that's was. It. it was crying. So yes, yeah, so I'm crying. just saying what I was seeing. He was, he, he was dragging his back yes. behind him. Yeah, yes. that's why you're saying crying duck. Like, oh, no, it's not a crying duck. <laughs> yeah. So I used to go out for crying ducks all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. We're coining it. Now it's a crying duck. And first ball, ready, got the kit and everything. So when the ball cup thing was always felt like... <laughs> I felt like if I wore it, they were going to throw for it, right? Yeah. Um, and the first ball would come in and I'd like... Out the way, straight up. Yeah. It was that bad. And then I've got to field him. And I used to ask to field right on the like boundary line. Yeah. Because then I could get my family or friends to sit at the boundary line. To get and I just and I just like talk for yeah. the whole game. <laughs> and just talk with my mates and kind of chill. Um, when you got into cricket, looking at those different positions, right? Whether you're a wiki keeper, a fielder, a bowler, or a batsman, how do you identify with what you are good at? Yeah, I think it happens like, dude, it happens within your first training. Just whatever comes naturally to your body. Yeah. It's like people that, like, if you play football, rugby, you can just see who's gonna pick up yeah. what quickly. Yeah. Because like, I think batting is a like a fine motor skill in essence. I think it's a fine motor skill. It's like tennis or whatever. So yes, it will come naturally, like your hand-eye coordination, or whatever. Um, but in the same way that you say bowlers can't bat. Like Lungi, Lungi, is a, Lungi, he plays for Africa, he believes he's yeah. a batter, but he can't bat. That's why that's number 10. So like, you don't have to be a good batter. Like, you just have well, certain differences. He, he believes he can well, bat. Well, the last couple of days, he's been putting stories of him batting on his Instagram. And this is, bear in mind, he's a last weekend. So I don't know <laughs> why he's putting these on his videos. But bowlers don't have to be able to bat, bro. It's Courage. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, you just pick up, you just pick it up, and then really, yeah. And and you you never had that feeling. You never had that like. No, see, like that's the thing. Like I think some people, it just it's natural. Really? Like you're not, you and it's like from six years old, five years old, when kids go to coaching or whatever, like yeah. they don't flinch. But some kids do. It's just. Oh, I flinch, eh? <laughs> I, I I flinch in cricket, and then when I'd spar in boxing. Fine. See, that's what I just keep hitting me in the head, which is not a good strategy either. No, but, but at least you're moving forward. <laughs> at least I'm moving forward. Exactly, exactly. Very slowly, but I'm moving forward. Um, the the idea there was a stat that I read where they were talking about being a batsman, how much of a response time you have. Oh yeah. From the ball leaving the the bowlsman or the, the bowler's, bowler's hand yeah. to touching the bat, and mm. it's like a split second yeah. that you have to decide where he's going to throw it and how he's going to throw it. Mm. What's that like for you? That, that comes literally from training because like as you get older, you face foster and foster guys and yeah. your eye and your body just gets used to it. So, I mean, like if you, for instance, weren't necessarily batting, but you just had to practice catching the ball at that speed, you'd struggle for like the first week, I reckon. But then if you just had to keep seeing the pace, your body would pick up eventually. And that's all, I think that's, that's all crazy, it really is. It's just you, your body and your instincts get quicker. Obviously, some guys are their instincts or their reactions are a little bit quicker. Yeah. And that's why they're better batters. But yeah, it's really, you have a, a short amount of time. It's literally just really picking up length, which is basically where the ball's gonna bounce. Cause that's okay. basically, you, you have like, the one, one of our coaches used to explain this, like when he releases a ball from like here to there, your brain is doing physics. It'll basically figure out where it's gonna land. Like how close to me is it gonna land? Just no from this, ways. this point, like from here to here, your brain will realize, okay, it's going straight down, so it's going to be short, or it's going towards my toe. That's basically what that is. And then after that, your instincts kind of take over. Kind of kick in and... Yeah. No ways. And then you have the added element of knowing what each bowler prefers to do. Yes. So someone will be a spin bowler or a yes, fast bowler or a... Swing bowler, seam, yeah. Yeah. 
This is crazy. I think I think it's harder than baseball because when I watch baseball, yes, I think they throw obviously they throw rapid like a yeah. hundred miles an hour, but they have to throw it in that box. Yes, I mean the bat is smaller, but I I, I don't know. I just I can't. They don't have to deal with bouncing. Have you have you ever tried? No, I haven't baseball. tried. So I don't want to disrespect guys and people call me out now and say, hey, "Come play baseball," and then I can't hit That's one when ball. That's you go okay, and you go play baseball. <laughs> yeah. But I just I don't know. I just I, I mean, they get paid a lot of money in America, but it, it, geez, they do. Yeah. It it feels like more of a even exchange. Yes. You throw it at me, and I'll hit, hit it, it back it. at you. Yes. Whereas cricket, the element that of like you said that it hits the ground. Yes, which changes the pace, changes, changes everything. The line. Yeah, it's it's tough, but I mean it's also not. Rocket science. It is a little bit. No, I think sometimes guys try to make it seem a lot harder than it is so that it seems cooler what we're doing. But once I you... I feel like they do that with golf sometimes. I also feel like with golf. And stuff. <laughs> it's actually, like, it's, it's complicated, but it's also simple. So you can also overcomplicate things. Golf? It's a mental sport. I want to say I agree with you, but then I started playing golf the last couple of months. <laughs> And I'm so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a batsman. Bro, and it's, it's frustrating me as well. It is, eh? Because <laughs> Every... the ball is still, so why can't I hit it with the fuck I want to hit it? <laughs> <laughs> the ball's still. It's not fucking moving. <laughs> we, we've, so Stephen well, gets off. Yes, exactly. I'd prefer that. <laughs> Literally everyone that's come in here plays golf. Stephen Kitsoff, Chad Leclerc, Malcolm Marks, um, Shakes, all of them play golf. And everyone says exactly the same thing. I love it, but it drives me mad. No, but it fucking... Their sports are so physical. So yes. Like a, yeah. It's a, you know, let's get up here for a change. Yes. Yeah, which could be a bad yeah, thing I as well, well getting up here. Goals. Yeah, yeah. Her brother plays um, like semi-pro. Oh wow, well. the mechanics and everything. Yeah, oh, see, then I don't. I can I can go to a driving range. Yeah, that I can do. <laughs> I'm good at that. Yeah, yeah. So if if there was like tag team golf, there is like scrambled golf. Really? Like scrambled drive or scramble? I don't know what the, I don't know all the rules of golf, but there's like, uh, what do you call it? Golf days where they'll have like scrambled days. So basically, like I would hit a shot, then you hit a shot. That I can do. Yeah, that's, that I can there's play. lots of like ways that they play, different ways. We need to get into that. Because <laughs> I'll... Oh, there's, golf there's there's definitely always drinking and, like involved. different holes there's yeah. drinking, yeah. Because I'll drive, someone else can play... The, like the intricate shots. There. That one? Yes. And then maybe, maybe I'll do the like, I'll do the like high chip onto the green and then I'll hand it over again. Yeah. I like the chipping. I practice it with her dad. It's so much fun. <laughs> but anything in between, like nah. putting, yeah. I'm out. I don't want to play it. <laughs> they, should, they, they should put a big hole, like the size of this table, yes. on the green and then have like a rule. You only allowed 10 meters close to it or 20 meters yeah. close to it. And, then you and it becomes like basketball with a stick. <laughs> and you've just got to like try to hit it in. in. Then, then I'm in. <laughs> but when the hole's the size of the coffee cup, yes. the truth coffee cup, Damn, how's that name drop? Then it's a problem. Yeah. So, yeah, so geez, you play two technical sports of cricket and golf. Yeah, but I don't know if I can call myself playing golf playing. It's like struggling. Trying golf. Yes, trying golf. Trying golf. There's a, there's a nine hole mushy course here at Northern Suburb side. Okay. Um, at Burgundy Estate. Okay. So much fun. Okay. Everything's a par three. So it's literally just like there, that's drive and two little miss putts, yeah. and that's it. Like okay. it's so much fun. So that I'll come do with you. Yeah, but we not can like go a do... full eighteen. Nah, yeah. it's too much walking. <laughs> no, it's I, so also, I prefer to get a cart, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, you carting? Yeah, uh, I, mean, I already walk when I play cricket, bro. I don't need to be walking here yeah, as, well. as well. Okay, fair. <laughs> okay, fair. Fair, fair. No, I'm in then. I'm in then. We can definitely go play around the golf. Um, oh, wait, I actually had. Um, one or two of the questions Kirsty sent through, I actually found, th thought were... I mean, all the questions are good. Sorry, Kirsty, they were really good for saying that. They're all great. And the um, bio was brilliant. Let, sh should we read that first sentence? <laughs> <Nah. laughs> <laughs> the first sentence is incredible. About your brutal stroke. Jesus. <laughs> Love that. I just have a brutal stroke. <laughs> but I don't play cricket. Cut that. Do you believe in pre-match superstitions or rituals? Yes, a little bit. Um, when I was younger, they used to be a bit hectic. Like there was a really? weekend where I wore, I scored 100 in this, a certain Woolworths underwear, which I unfortunately lost. 
they were grey and orange, so I got a hundred in them. So then I wore them the next week, got a hundred, next week hundred. Okay, then I put see. them in my I put them in my laundry at hostel and they got lost. It broke me. The next week I I got a duck. But I think that was all mental because I was really? like oh, my underwear's gone. <laughs> <laughs> What? No, genuine. It was gone. I didn't, and the thing is, like, because I was at hostel, so you'd put your laundry in, I think it was like on a Tuesday. So I'd, from the weekend, I'd play Saturday, then you could only put on Tuesday. So keep it Tuesday, obviously come back Thursday. Then I obviously don't wear them until Saturday. They were working, bro. But, Hundred, I mean, okay. Dude, I promise you, I have the newspaper articles, 300 in a row. I was moving. It was really? big time, and then I lost it. That's why my, that's when my career plateaued. See, <laughs> <laughs> so Woolies just trying to find that like exact pair of underwear yeah, I used dude. to make. No ways. Uh, but no, now I, not really. I have like certain things I do the night before. Like I'll read my the stuff I've written down on like the team we're playing uh. um, or where we're playing. Um, but that's not like a lot of stuff. It's just uh, small things. Um, Is if, that like description of the bowlers and how they choose to play? Or? Yeah, like what they'll try to do to me or, okay. or where they possibly miss. Uh, if they get it wrong, like where do they miss? Because some yeah. guys miss in different places. Um, and then... Uh, depending on like if you're the Proteus, Ruben, like our Anna's guy, he sends videos of guys or he sends videos of wow. what you want okay. of the guys. So like some guys like videos of them taking wickets to see their best balls. Like I don't like to see that shit. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see that either. Do, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like to see where they like get it wrong. And then, um, so I'll watch a bit of that, but nothing too hectic. Um, I like to, I like to try have a normal dinner something because usually traveling. Mm. So I like to have dinner and a beer or whatever. Mm. Keep mm. it light. And mm. then... I don't usually like to have breakfast in the morning. I have coffee. Just really? coffee. And Stayed I, fasted into the game. Yeah, I don't like to have breakfast in the morning. It makes me feel like, slow. So okay. then I have coffee. Um, if I'm feeling like flat, I have a banana or something, but then it just makes my stomach go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you, once you're in that kit, you're in that you're kit. In that kit, dog. Yeah. I've only had it once or twice where you like, you've like you padded up and it's like five minutes and then you, you need to go, bro. Oh, <laughs> and you've got like super dump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but then I don't really have too many because it used to be, a, I used to have a lot and then it's like, shit, did I put on the pad the right way? Did I, it almost took, took like you, once you get so many, it like takes you out of the I state see. it's supposed to put you in. And I, I say that. Okay. So I'd like cut them all away now. Yeah. I, I, I feel like your superstition wasn't a superstition because it was proven. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. If yes. you go 100, 100, 100, take them off zero, that's kind of... The evidence is there. It's Proof right is the there, point. right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to... So what we're going to do, we're going to tell Franklys... We're going to tell Franklys to make him orange and... It was orange and grey, bro. Orange and grey. <laughs> Franklys, <laughs> you need to make Tony orange and grey underwear. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I mean, I'm going to chat to them. Please do it. Uh, what is... Oh, I like this. What is your most memorable moment on the cricket field? Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a couple because there's a few. Let's so I'll give it. you one from school. That was a, a good school memory. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't play cricket anymore, but I don't know why. I just whenever we meet and we see these guys, we always talk about the same story. There was a high catch dean. He was like a chubby guy, fast bowler, first team cricket, and he hated catching. He was like like you saying, he didn't want to field whatever. He could just bowl really well, and we'll never forget. Like there we go. I was chubby dean. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I was chubby dean. I'll never forget. The ball goes up. Poof. We're in Maritzburg, and it's like a. Uh, intense game. This was basically for a final in Marysburg. Um, ball goes up and you just hear like, can I swear on this thing? Go for it. So you, it goes up and you just see him put his hands up early, which you don't do. <laughs> the ball's still going up. Oh, really? You don't he, put hands up? No, not early, man. It, when it's coming down, like at the apex, that's when you put your His hands are up already and he just goes, <laughs> oh, fuck. Because <laughs> obviously it's only going to him. He's the only guy out You're there. You're the only person. So as it goes up, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. I don't know why, but it sticks with me. Oh, fuck. I feel like that was, that was what was going through my head every single game. When that yeah. bowler throws, ah, uh, fuck, every single time. Like, it's the only thing I remember from, well, I remember a few things. And then I'd say the, I got a 20-20-100 in Abu Dhabi, which was quite cool. 20 20 um, Yeah, um, it's a full mat. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then uh, the, the cool thing was like Brian Laura was there, uh, who was like my childhood hero. So Sick. he was commentating. And then afterwards, like, he, the, the guys, like, get together and have, like, a, um, drinks in the bar after the game and stuff like that. Yeah. And then he, like, came looking for me, like, and he has the proper West Indian accent. He's like, that's where's cool. this Aussie? Oh, like, that's cool. That's so, sick. yeah, that's probably my favorite. Then okay. he, like, we had a conversation and everything, and I was, like, trying to play it cool because he's, like, if you search, he's a legend, bro. So, really? And, and he like, came, asked, looking, he for came looking for me, like, that's speaking cool. to me, having a normal conversation. Like, yeah. I'm as big as him. I was like, bro, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, that's probably my favorites. That's Good sick. Memory. Yeah. Jeez, like I like those kind of memories where you, it, it, it's almost like a crossover of different generations of the same sport. Like yes. that's such a cool moment. Because you also but don't you, think you're going to see him. Like he's a legend. So you don't, you watch videos of him, like he stopped playing when I'm like 15. No, even younger when I'm like 30. Oh, really? That long ago? Yeah, so he was like a proper legend. So you're not, you don't think you're ever going to run into this person. You know what I mean? Like where it's like Jeez, AB, you could like, maybe, because he's still younger, you could maybe play with him or play I against see. him. You know what I mean? Okay. Where's he's like not him, too far out of reach. Yes. Like, was with him, it's like you never think you're going to see that guy. Yeah, so then yeah. you did, it was sick. There was a moment that you got me thinking of now. Please tell me if this is true or not. Because okay. I've read about it many times. I don't know if it's a myth or a true story. Okay. When the ball went in there and Chubby Dean went, oh fuck, oh, fuck right? Yeah. It got me thinking. <laughs> there was a moment in cricket history where the batsman hit and played it straight up and caught himself out. I don't know about that, bro. Really? <laughs> no, I don't know quickly. about that. I, I, I'm not that guy. I don't know stats and stories okay. like that. I'm not that guy. The urban legends. Yeah, it's bugging me. I just want to ask, what are you Googling? Are you Googling batter hit ball straight up? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I Googled cricket player catches himself out. <laughs> I, prom I swear this happened. <laughs> I'm going to find it. You have to scroll. It's not there. <laughs> No, man, imagine this is just like made up and I just like made it You've up. You've just gone with it. Have you told other people the story? I have. <laughs> and everyone does the same thing. As, as soon as the words leave my mouth, everyone's like, that didn't happen. Um, uh, crap. History batsman catches his own ball out. I promise this happened. Maybe you saw it in like a reel or something. It was like the footage was really old. Um... Oh, now I can't find it. I'm going to send it to you on, I promise no you. If it does exist, I've seen you this. can find it. I'll send it to you. The other moment was, it was a South African player. I don't know if this is a touchy subject for the world of cricket. But there was a moment uh, in cricket where the crowd kept going off. Mm -hmm. And he turned around and chirped the crowd back. And like, yeah. zapped the crowd. I can't remember who it was. I think a few guys have done it though. Like, really? I think... There's always some, okay, there's stories from like long ago and more recent, I think. Okay, because I, I, I just remember watching it as a kid and seeing it happen. I remember it being like a scandal. Mm. But the crowd were literally like booing him, going off at him. Yeah. And he just suddenly had enough, took his helmet off, turned around and like zapped the crowd and like went off. Mm. And it was this like big moment of like, you know, you shouldn't yeah, do shouldn't that do in that. cricket. And I wasn't sure if that was, like you said, like now guys have done that before. Mm. Um, I think players should have the right to do that kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know. Me. I haven't been in a situation where, I mean, if you play in Cape Town or Paul, like you get abused. Really? Yeah. So, which is, and the thing is that Cape Town and Paul, like people love their sports, so they know cricket. Yeah. So they're not like, it's not stupid chirps. Like, uh, so the chirp actually makes sense. Yeah, no, no. It's like, it's like cricket chirps. The guys know their sport. They love their sport. So they love cricket. So they'll know your stats. They'll know things about whatever. So they're not Ooh. just like, Hey, you look ugly or something. It's like cricket chirps. They're clever. So that's, they're funny. That's the problem. The eh? ones that are like, like if you go in like, I don't know, in Pretoria or something and they're just like swearing at you and like, hey, you're dumb, whatever. Like, yeah. That doesn't add up. No. Mm. But the smart ones are the, the, <laughs> the ones that make you think. Those are the ones that stick. Eh? <laughs> sit in the house. And then mentally you've got to beat that yourself as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, you don't really have that. I mean, you, you, you have that a lot in rugby, I think because it's such a national sport for us. Yeah, it is a national sport. Um, do you have in cricket that the people go off at the refs? No, you can't. Or umpires, umpires. at least? No, 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 you can't. Not like in football. and I don't think you can yeah. even in rugby. I see like you just got to talk to them. But no, you don't really have that kind of rapport with the ref at uh, the umpires. Not really. So, because the, the, the calls that an umpire makes is like, much more obvious calls, right? Yeah, LBW, they kind of find out, mm. that kind of stuff. You can obviously refer them though, um, like TMO or whatever. Yeah. You can, uh, you get three of those, depending on the format. But you don't like, no, you don't like converse with the umpires much. So if it was like an LBW and you're like, no, it wasn't, you could... You could, rev you could review yeah. it, yeah. Uh, but you wouldn't, for instance, like with football, when they give a penalty or whatever, like when they swarm the, swarm the ref and say like, no, that's not the right, you don't get to do that. No. Uh, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what all of us wait for. <laughs> we should do that. They should allow that. Yeah, cricket. yeah. They should just have all the fieldsmen just no, coming. Cricketers are hooligans. Like, so really? if they had to do that, then 
wouldn't wouldn't fly. Nah, it wouldn't work. Are cricket players hooligans on tour? Yeah. Is it like just a like you know boys environment of everyone kind of getting to travel together, or is it out of just pure passion for the sport getting carried away on the field? I think a bit of both. I think a yeah. bit of both, but like, yeah. but yeah, cricket. What is the saying? Like cricket, cricket is a gentleman sport played by hooligans, and rugby is yes. a I don't know what it's other way sport played, played by, by gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. That, it is that way. I've, I've I've seen it. I believe it now. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've, I've, I've never experienced... I'd actually love to go watch a cricket game soon again. I like watching the T20 games. Yeah, the quick ones. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've, I've gone... Uh-huh. Like, reason, reason being, I'm not saying that in, uh-huh. in any other way other than it's easier for me to keep up. Yes. The five-day cricket... You don't know where... I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. It's just like they bat, then they bat, but then they also bat, then they, they also, also bat, bat, then, then it's... And I'm just like... I don't know where we are. Yeah. But there's a there's a series against India coming up in December. I think I think the Newlands has the New Year's Test match, which will be on like the third. But okay. You should come. That's five days. I don't know if I'm playing. I hopefully I'm selected. But <laughs> there's five we'll days. Be that'll be a that'll be nice. Even though it's test test cricket, it's long. But that that yeah. hasn't happened in New Newlands for like the last four years, five years. No way. The New Year's Test match. So that's like we big. literally live across the road. Yeah, I live right there as well. So you should go there. Yes, at Claremont. Uh, no, I'm in Kenilworth, but like oh, three Kenilworth, you're right the, next to it. Yeah. Do you know where that Pam Golding and like bootleggers? Yes. Pick and pet, yeah, like the building yes. next to Pam Golding. There. No ways. Okay, you literally are oh, like down the road from us. Yeah. Sick. We'll do beers and stuff there. We'll come <laughs> with you. But you should third, go. Third of December. I think it's the third. There are actual dates. I should check. I okay. Mean, so that I can manifest. But are we going to go to watch you play. Yeah. No stress. Yeah. Good. Tickets, box, everything, and you just there get beers in the sun like, under the oaks. There's Tony, and they're going to go, but who's the guy with him? I'm going to go, who cares? Don't know, but there's Tony. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go to Tony. Who's yeah, that yeah. guy? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that guy. I'm in. I'm in. Okay, sick. 3rd of December, we'll try to get that going. Because we're going to do, what we're trying to do more of is attending the sports and the events that we actually get to talk about Ooh. here on the couch, right? Okay. So, like, so now we'll do the EFC in September yes because um, I find UFC and MMA and Jiu Jitsu all these things fascinating those are just um, machines yeah, yeah I yeah, can't imagine are. fighting for money bro. that's see, a different I've, mental state I've, I've never seen it in person yeah and this is the thing this is do you, do you watch a lot of UFC I watch it like here and there like I obviously follow certain guys but I'm not okay. like I don't so, know what they're doing. I don't so know what the you've probably are. been following the whole Drikus and Israel, the, and, the whole thing going yeah, yeah. down, and the fact that Adesanya is Chinese, but he's also Kiwi, but yeah, he's also Kiwi, African. He's also Niger- it's know. great. Yeah. It's great. Um, let's not get into that conversation today. Yeah, it's but, quite but deep. It is quite <laughs> deep. It's got quite deep. I don't know. It's, I just it, thought they wanted to fight. Right? Yeah, it's getting quite it's deep. It's gotten deep, and yeah. everyone's like, I don't want to give my opinion on this yes, anymore. Like, exactly. it's, it's just kind of gone that direction. Um, but Charlotte Drickus, we love you. Um, and then I realized I've never actually seen someone actively try to kick the shit out of someone else in person. So over TV, there's obviously this like divide. It's still a barrier, yeah. Exactly. It's like entertainment. Yeah. In person, I think, is a whole different element. Um, and so this will be the first we ever get to watch yeah, well, that'll be... in person. That's what I was saying. If you're in Joburg, like pull through. Yes. That's what I'm saying. You're fighting for your money. That is like different gravy. I don't See know how those guys do that. Right? And then these guys have families. Yes. And it's like, now I've got to kick the shit out of you to get paid to feed my family. Yes. I'm like, Dude, I don't want to get in the ring and fight someone that has That's that on the there. line. That's going through that, no chance. You no can't compete chance. with that person. That's why, hats off to them. I could <laughs> never do that. I could n- never. Um, wait, there was one or two other questions that I really digged you, and then we can talk shit. Ooh, who is the toughest bowler to face? Or that I've faced? In your opinion, yeah, uh, and why? I'll, I'll just go like the guys I've faced. So I think in my debut I faced Al Zari Joseph from the West Indies he's actually oh, okay. he was actually at the World Cup in Bangladesh he's uh, the same age as me but from oh, West Indies no so it's quite cool to be making my debut against him but he was already like been playing international cricket he's really quick he bowls like 150 kilometers an hour like constantly Jeez, and he's like... a proper he's a proper um, competitor so he uh, doesn't stop um, Jeez, like... so I'd say him and then I've faced like KG and Anna because sometimes they'll play domestic games oh. um, and those two are also obviously rapid and KG is ex- like really skillful, like different, there's yeah. a different level of skill that he's operating at. Is, that, is that in terms of like how many options he has? Yeah, like what he can do with the ball and like, because you, you might be able to do something with the ball, like you can get it to swing away, but his ability to do it 
correctly and make you play and thingy. Ooh, like he doesn't yeah. miss, so he's really skillful. And he's doing it at quick. Yeah. Pace. So I'd say like those three guys, because I, I haven't played too many. I mean, Shine Shah, who you, I don't think you'll know from Pakistan, we played once in Abu Dhabi, that same tournament. He was, and he was about 18. He was also rapid, like really skillful, yeah. And Harris Rolf. So I'd say, but I've given a lot of guys. So I'd say Joseph, because he's not in okay. the same country. Yeah. And I haven't faced too many other guys. So I'm sure. Maybe and it's it'll cool change. that you've kind of gone like your whole career with these guys as well. Yes. Like yeah. from beginning to end. Because mm. it, 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 it's, it must be pretty cool that they would be saying from their side, you know, like, who's the hardest batsman to face? And Maybe then your name you. comes up, you know, like that, that happens. That's, that's really cool. That's <laughs> um, the, the bowler that comes to mind for me when I think of bowlers, Mikai and Tini. Yes. I used to love watching him. <laughs> he, he was, he was a fast bowler. Yes, he was. And then who was the guy? He, he used to bowl from the side. Malinga. But he's not South African, right? No. Malinga. No. Yeah. He, he, he always used to dye yeah, his, his hair. His long, like, peroxide hair. Yes. Yeah. Malinga. I used to watch him as well. I was yes. fascinated by that. That the he'd Shulankan bowl, guy. like, out the side. Yes. Um, and I'd never seen anyone else do that when I, when, when I used to There's watch. another guy that's coming like, them, like that from Sri Lanka as well. He's bowling exactly like Malinga. Really? Yeah. And there's no rule against, like... I just think it can't be below 90 or something like that. So you basically can't underarm. But it has okay, to be Okay, so he's got to stay in that range. Yeah, you've got to stay at a certain angle or whatever. Like, they'll test the guys if they think that they're going past it. Jeez, like... And then he's probably got... What's fascinating about that as well, he's probably gone his whole life being taught how to bowl standard mm. and then finds this own technique that he loves. Yes. So he's got this whole range of distance... That he can use. ...to also play with. Like, imagine you facing him and he's constantly throwing here and then randomly a ball comes in he that he's thrown... Him, yeah. You kind of... You see, like, those are so, so successful, tough to face because you don't get the... Like, when I was saying, you get this point to, like, make your you decision. Don't you don't get that read because now it's tough to pick up the length. Because the same, they can bowl short from here and full. And you, you don't get that... Uh, that's clever. That's why, they were, they were, that's why they were so deceptive. That's why, like, Malinga that you remember used to get guys because it was tough to pick up the length. That's clever, eh? Mm. And when, when facing, like, I want to go back to having that distance. At what point is, is, is your brain going, this can go for a six? That's what I'm saying. There's the, like, you don't have... Look how long it took you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> See, like, you don't insane. have that. <laughs> yeah, you don't have that. It's just, you train certain things. That's why I say you train to, like, pick up length, pick up, like, to identify things. For your body, your muscle memory to identify things. So, like, if you're playing white ball cricket, you'll train 140 or whatever, and then if it lands here, like, that's the shot you're going to play. So, more often than not, you watch the ball, obviously, your eyes aren't closed, but it's, you don't actually, like, people say you watch the ball, but if you watch, if you have to watch videos in slow-mo, like, the guy's hitting the ball, and the ball's already gone, because it's too quick. You're not going to be going, like, that is crazy. and watching it. So, yeah, your body, you train your body to react to certain things, and, it, and some guys, obviously, just train in different ways. They'll hit more sixes. But then... Uh, but then there's moments in cricket, I, I think it's more like the T20 side, where there's only like a few balls left and yes. the guys will just go for six, for yeah. six, for six. Yes. That's on purpose though. Yeah, obviously. I mean, you, if any batter wanted to hit every ball for six, they'd love to, but it's tough, you can't. But yeah, with the 2020 is like it gets to the back end, you need to hit sixes. And guys get paid bombs to do that. So no matter where that guy's going to throw that ball, I need to know how to turn it into, into a six. six. Yes. That is insane. It's a skill set, yeah. And that's what I said, they get paid bombs to do that. Like, it's a, it's a tough art. It's a tough that's skill. That's why this is one of the sports I know for a fact I would never be good at. <laughs> Ever. Uh, genuinely, there's like certain things. Like, I joke with her family all the time about golf. And I go, like, I actually think I'd be good at golf. I yeah. genuinely think I could actually be good at it. And people are going to be watching now going, Josh, talking a bunch of shit. <laughs> I actually think I'd be good at golf. Tennis, I know I can't be good at. Why? My best friend is the best tennis coach in the country and uh, works with head incredible brand and i've watched him play we've been friends for like nine ten years and i've watched him play a lot yes and every time i watch him or try to play it just doesn't make sense to me yeah it just doesn't add up i don't understand how <laughs> i have to hit the ball over something but still get it in the block like yes. it just it, my brain just doesn't add it up yes so watching tennis for me is so foreign but luckily having him as my best mate yes. he explains everything so you start picking up on like what's 
where's there so much talent in it mm. and you know you, you kind of start to appreciate, appreciate the little the things skills. like with yes. it same with cricket there's a there's a shot that they make i don't know what the name of it is it's like a backhand I right I sh i'll show you so they go we're gonna have a, a stick a so that so that yeah so he bowls but it's almost like as the ball hits the ground he say so if, if i'm you're a left-handed batter yeah but you can do it right-handed it's the same yeah thing. so it's instead of getting ready to play it they reverse the bat and know how to tip it off that way. Yeah, it's like a reverse lap. That's, that's what they call insane it. to me. Yeah, that that you all you have is that distance from the ball leaving his hand, and you know. But that would be premeditated. That's premeditated. Yes. But how do you know that he's going to definitely? He's going to bowl that? in that area. No, you you like so that's like your game instincts or whatever. So you know, like that's like what makes a good guy special is their their ability to read bowlers, the game, the game situation, and then make a premeditated guess but it's based off certain things so like for instance if like you're saying the guy that's done this maybe the ball before was short and he's hit it for six so he knows that he can't go short again so oh, he's, he's assuming or making an educated guess that it's going to come full and then he's going to play that shot because sometimes they do go play the shot but the guy bowls a completely different ball now you can't play it so a lot of the times the premeditated stuff is like an educated guess. You're reading a game, you'll feel for the game, you feel like this is what he's going to try to do because of the stuff that's happened before, or videos you've watched. Yeah. And then you do that, yeah. I see. It yeah. sounds so complicated. I promise you it's not. <laughs> to you it's not, though. I swear it is a complicated sport. It's a, there's, a, there's another one when they, when they purposefully bounce the ball really high. Yes, a bouncer. That one. Yeah, it's called a bouncer. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. When it bounces really high, that it's called a bouncer. bouncer. I understand. <laughs> and it comes high. It, it, it just looks beautiful on, on video. And they, they get that, like, that side swipe where the, 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 the bat's coming like... I love watching That's that. That's a pull shot, yeah. A pull bouncer, shot. pull shot. Where they, where they go like... Because they're pulling it across. Yeah, and pull. that ball just motors. Like yeah. It doesn't change. Just it's like straight love that as well <laughs> um, see all these little things that i can think of but other than that like same as uh watching wiki keepers yes that's so much fun i don't know how because you think about this that is a cut job really oh, i don't know why guys i would enjoy it but yeah i think it's cut. It, it it's i mean you're facing the same thing as the batsman except you don't have a bat yeah that's all the guys weird. that are keepers are weird though, bro. Like, really? If you meet them, you oh, they're just, all a bit cooked. They're all a bit weird. Bro. They have to be. Like, Surely, a bit weird. Not like creepy weird. They're just like weird guys. All of them. Yeah. In their own way, they're not all sim like the same weird. No, but they chose to yeah, be they that chose position. This yeah. Position where you squat and catch and squat and ca and. Uh, no, I don't see, know. I'm out there. Eh? I'm out there. Yeah. Nah. And they make. The, <laughs> yeah, you're the, too the, big the... to be a keeper, bro. If I saw you keeping, I'd bust out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be ready though. <laughs> yeah. I'd just be super padded so I don't have to catch. I could just just, <laughs> that just land. Be like, let's go again, dude. Try again. Um, would you be allowed to do that? You can yeah, you I mean some balls don't carry and stuff, like the the ball won't get to the keeper and then it like hits them and stuff. So yeah, you, you would be. Just wouldn't be advisable. Wouldn't be advisable. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Shit, that's such a great sport. It's cool to pick up on these things. That's why, like, I know it's not like questions, like interview questions for you. Yeah. But bringing up these things, this is actually a session of me learning more than the audience learning <laughs> about you. So apologies for that. But um, that's been so much fun. Who's been your favorite and least favorite team to face? Favorite. Uh, and this can be based on you enjoy the actual team or yeah. you enjoy the country or you enjoy... Uh, maybe you friends with the other players. Like, yeah. who to you? Where okay. does the most and least enjoyment come out of it for you? I'd say Sri Lanka. I enjoy mm. Sri Lanka because I just think they they play like a different style of cricket. Um, they're like street fighter, hustler kind of guys. They play like Sick. smart kind of cricket. Um, it's a tough place to tour, but they it's like going to India where people really love cricket, but it's not necessarily mm. as hectic. So I'd say Sh Sri Lanka as a team, I really enjoy playing because I've played against them a few times, like in A cricket here and in Sri Lanka. Um, so I'd say Sri Lanka is probably my favorite. And then worst, I don't know. I'd, um, I don't know what my worst would be. Probably Bangladesh was a tough place to tour. Yeah. And under yeah. 19, <laughs> scores from the World Cup. But then there we've we go. gone there after, uh, sorry, before the World Cup, just on a normal tour as well. It was a tough place to play cricket, but like it's, yeah. it's, um, 
the stadiums are tough, the wickets turn, like it's boiling hot, it's different to July. It's yeah, just like that's hot. hardcore. Eh? Yeah. No, it was hot. Um, and we got murdered, like we got we got dealt with. So, what is what is And then murdered? they came to South Africa and they dealt with us as well. So I was really? like, yo, under 19. So I'd say Bangladesh, <laughs> that was my time. For good reasoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, what, they earned what it. Is, what is murdered to you? No, like they beat us, I think we had seven, it was a six game series there, there. And we won one, so they won five one. And I think when they came here, it was the same thing, six games, and we won two. Oh, I see. So like, I haven't played Bangladesh again. Thank goodness. Since that? Yeah, since that under nineteen, and uh, and it's it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, 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 that can come later. Yeah, it right? can come later. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a better player. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, like Bangladesh playing in the heat must be. It's tough, yeah. It's like a long time element. in the heat. It's not like an yeah. hour or two and hours. And you padded. Yeah. And that was my hair, dude. It's fucking hot under that helmet, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I've only just started realizing this now. The longer it's got, it's getting hotter because there's no like air on my neck. So <laughs> You're going to shave? Nah. Nah, you're going to stick. It's my persona now. There you go. It really is, <laughs> yeah, eh? Yeah. As, as soon as the first person was like, hey, you got J. Cole vibes, you're yeah, like, never shaving this Never hair shaving again. this thing off. Yeah. yeah. That's sick. I think cricket. You know, the funny thing I think with cricket is because they're always on the field for like extended periods of time. Their like, okay, bodies are get used to it. But for instance, if you had to come stand in the field and field for us for three, four hours, it could happen to you. I won't lie. Yeah, it's possible. I won't lie. But no, I, I haven't. I mean, some guys when it gets really hot like that, they'll get like, you know, when Irks vomit and like diarrhea kind of. Yeah. But they won't like pass out and shit. It's not nah, that. I'm good, eh? Nah, the show I'm must good, go on. Eh? Like, the, the game, if you're playing the next day, we, you, you get up, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you've got to do it, eh? Yeah. Get your orange and grey underwear. Yes. Have your banana, nothing else. Your, your pre-game beer. Mm. If there was one rule in cricket that you could change, what would you want to change? They're doing the thing now with the super sub. I don't know if I like it. Like which, Super sub? Which is basically, I think, for instance, if you batting or bowling first, then... Like if the team batting second and they're chasing um, and they let's say lose like six, seven wickets, they could essentially sub one of their bowlers out because he's not going to bowl um, for another batter. So I don't know if I agree with that rule because it kind of takes away the, um, the importance of having, having like a good all-rounder who is yeah. someone who can do both. Yeah. Because now you're saying, well, we might as well pick an extra strong bowler and then when he's done bowling, we can just pick another batter. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I agree I with that rule. Um, the rule I would change, I would maybe change, I would change this, this, the substitute fielder role though. Okay. So I'd say, I think you should allow that. So, cause fielding Ooh. is a, fielding is a, like a, it's, it's tough. And some people obviously just better at it than others. Yeah. But I don't think it's like a direct impact on the game, but it could be. I so I feel like you saying. could, you could. Like in baseball, there's obviously guys that are just better fielders or whatever, and yeah. they only field. Yeah. So I'm like, it would be cool if, for instance, you were allowed to have two substitute fielders because it would just increase the level of importance. Yes, on fielding and the yes. intensity of the game. Because now you have two guys that on the field that are literally just there to field. That's what they get paid to do. And you would That's see cool. more special uh, fielding moments, can I say, happening. Yeah. And like, for instance, if you bowl, when you're done bowling, you go off and then this guy fields for you. And like... That's cool. I'm saying for shorter formats, I think it would be cool just because I think maybe, yeah, like with, with white ball, the fielding is really important. So if you were allowed to do that, those people could have impacts and it would increase yeah. the intensity of the game. I is, think. Is, is fielding more important on white ball cricket because the ball moves faster than, than, a, than a red ball? No, I think it's, they're both important, but like with white ball, um, I, can I say, it's obviously, obviously in cricket, it's whoever scores more runs wins. But, in red boards, like over a long period of time, um, mm. it's over days or whatever. So the intensity of the fielding is not as hectic. Um, so okay. that your impact on the game won't be as hectic. Whereas with fielding in red boards, more about catching. So to get wickets. But with white ball, like your fielders, if you're a good fielder, you could save like 10, 20 runs. Jeez, like, if yeah. they're like athletes, they throw and straight. That's a they big, catch, that's it's a big, big difference. difference. Especially yeah. in a 2020 game where, or 50 over white ball, where it's like that jam packed. Yes. So that's where I say, like in red ball, I think it's a different thing. I wouldn't suggest it because 
it's called test cricket. You're supposed to be there for five days. You're supposed to be able to try a bowl when you're tired. I'm supposed to be able to field when I'm tired from batting. Okay. That's the whole point of that. That's uh, that's like an extra added element. Yes, yeah. that's how I see it. But I'm saying may, it okay. would be cool if they could maybe, if you could do that, that's maybe what I would change. Yeah. I have one suggestion yes. of rule change. Tell us. So, <laughs> you know, as a kid, yes. you'd, you'd play French cricket. Yes. Okay, so if you constantly go out for crying ducks, yes, right? First ball grace. You know, I'd love first ball grace. <laughs> you should be allowed to choose just for one over mm -hmm. French cricket. In and the middle of the game? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you go, okay? <laughs> and everyone zones in and, and the bowler gets to throw underhand. Yes. And I get to stand. Yes. Just so I can get my eye in. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm yeah. loving how serious your face is when you're telling me this. <laughs> yeah, this is a genuine concern. Because again, I have a theory. Yes. I think I'd be good at cricket. If it was. If it was like that. French cricket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I think I'd be fire at it. I yeah, think everyone would be fire at it then. But then how much not entertaining that would be? <laughs> no, it was man. like professional French cricket. Like, you know, like tennis just got paddle. Yes. Why doesn't cricket get French cricket? Nah, 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 you can't try to quit this. Yeah. Those are not straight lines. Not, not. <laughs> no. Is it not? No. In my head, it makes sense. If we had a giant circle, and it's like a drinking game. <laughs> now we're drinking in this over as well. No, 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 no. So it, the, I, I'm, 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 just, I'm like picturing potential if we got hold of head, and we're like, listen, you guys make paddle bats, make French cricket bats. Yeah. And then you could be like Tony the star French cricket player. <laughs> Right? I haven't worked. And you could just, wah, like, wah. Just, just, just one over. And then be like, nah, okay, it's fine. I got back my iron, go back. Yeah, yeah. So then you'd never have any ducks again. But it wouldn't really be getting my iron because the oak is underarming at like 30 kilometers an hour. See, if but that. Like, let's start at 30. <laughs> and then we can go to the 150 like the other <laughs> yes. crazy guy throws at. Because French cricket I like. And then a guy that I work with, shout out to Aaron. Brought up village cricket. Okay. And he plays a load of village cricket. Okay. And he was asking if there's been any moments in your life in village cricket. Okay. Like, I guess that's just like playing for fun, right? Yeah, that's yeah. like playing with like your mates. Like club shit. cricket yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that, yeah. Is that still enjoyable for you? Like as a professional, would you choose to go and like play village cricket for like shits and gigs? I don't know, but I'm a bit different maybe, you know. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. Not because I think I'm above it, it's just because like, I, I it's love- all you do. Yeah, I love cricket. Yeah. So like, if I'm now chilling, I'm not one of the guys that, if I'm spending time away from cricket, I'm gonna go You're play gonna do cricket. more cricket. That's, yeah. not, that's not me. And that's why if we had French cricket, <laughs> I you still wouldn't play it, bro. Oh, you wouldn't play French cricket? <laughs> nah. If I'm off, I'm off. I would rather go watch rugby or watch football, like I'm doing my FPL or read a book, play golf, but nah. I'm not playing okay, more fair. cricket. Fair. Like, I'll, really, I'll, I'll give the thought some more thought. I think there's something there. I, I think so. I just don't know if I'm going to be a part of the French cricket thing. I can't tell people this. Oh, like, I see. In the middle of the over, guys, we're going to play. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be that guy. I'm already... When you, when you put it like that, <laughs> I'm like, just imagine, like, in kind thing. He like, stops his whole over. He's oh, like, okay, this one is brilliant. unarmed. Nah, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just start a different league. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just start a French cricket league. That makes sense. And then retired cricket players can go play there. Yes. And if you shoot it, you can do it in the warehouse. Everything will be unbelievable. You see. They you I can, can, do I can buy into that, yes. Okay, so separate league. <laughs> yes. Not halfway through a round <laughs> nah. or, 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 or an over. Okay, nah, okay, nah. fair. I'm, I'm, I'm in on that. <laughs> you said that in your, in, your, in your free time, football, soccer is, is a passion of yours. Yes. It's something you enjoy. Who is your team? Chelsea. Really? Who do you support? I don't Liverpool. know. Liverpool. Sure, hectic. I knew it. Okay, we're not on a good streak hectic. Uh, at the moment. So I, I, I became a Liverpool fan. First, I was a Man United fan as a kid. Yo, I, you should be careful how you word this. I know. You were a United fan, then you moved to Liverpool. I know. I apologize for my sins. Um, her whole family are Man United. And so you're going to move back? No, not a chance. Okay. Went, went <laughs> over to Liverpool because my cousin was a Liverpool supporter and him and I would always watch soccer together. Okay. 
And he was the first person that ever explained soccer to me like properly okay. in terms of the Premier League, understanding how transfers would work yes, and club money everything. would work and all, all that stuff that you don't really learn about. And it was at the time that Liverpool had Gerrard, Skirtle, uh, okay. Torres had come slightly just after, but Torres had joined in. Xavi, with, Alonso, yeah, the, it was a classic team. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then John I was like, okay, reset. I yeah. love Liverpool. And Gerrard was like, yeah, he was boy. the king. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then Gerard left, yes. and then and then things change, and now we still have incredible, um, like Salah's incredible. There's incredible players at at, at, at yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people do that. Yeah, <laughs> Whenever you bring his name up, they're like, eh. yeah. um, but my brother and my dad, Chelsea. Oh, great people there. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have had they them. Yeah, yeah. I'd prefer it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they 